My name is Hashim Ghazi, and I'm what is called a structural interventional cardiologist. If you're a doctor, a student, a patient, or anyone who is just interested in learning about how the human body works, how we investigate for diseases and diagnoses, and the thought process that we use to find solutions, I welcome you to subscribe to this channel and come along on this journey with me. Today we're going to use the story of a hypothetical patient named Jill, who represents hundreds of thousands of patients suffering from a deadly condition. And we're going to use that story to learn about one of the most advanced treatments that we have in medicine, and one which is one of the most effective and useful things that we can do in all of medicine to save lives. So here it goes. It was a normal day, and Jill was out shopping and doing her groceries. But suddenly she collapsed and she fainted and regained consciousness once she hit the ground. She was taken to the hospital where the doctor examined her, listened to her heart and heard a loud murmur, which is a sign of a turbulence of flow or a rocky flow through the valves of the heart, as opposed to normal, quiet, laminar blood flow through the valves of the heart. He ordered an ultrasound called an echocardiogram and this showed that there was a problem with the aortic valve Normally, this valve opens without any resistance every time that the heart squeezes in and allows blood to leave the heart, go into the body, and as the heart relaxes, the valve closes so that the blood does not get sucked back into the heart where it came from. The problem was that Jill's aortic valve was thickened and hardened. The leaflets of her aortic valve had deposition of calcium, turning them into rock rather than being thin and pliable as they're supposed to be. This is called aortic stenosis, and because of this, there was obstruction. The valve didn't open properly, and the blood had difficulty leaving the heart. Consequently, the blood pressure in the head and the rest of the body was lower, and transiently it had dropped low enough that she actually passed out. Other people with aortic stenosis may have symptoms such as shortness of breath or chest pain due to the obstruction of flow. As you can see on her echocardiogram, as her heart is squeezing, there is an obstruction of flow leaving the heart. This is just like if you had a garden hose and had had running water through it and you pinched the end of it, what would happen? As you pinched it tighter and tighter, the opening became smaller and smaller. The velocity of blood flow leaving the heart, leaving that tube or the garden hose would go faster and faster. So the acceleration of flow and its velocity would correlate with how much you're obstructing the outflow of the pipe by pinching it. We use that same principle on the echocardiogram and measure the velocity of the blood leaving the heart to tell us how much obstruction there is. The velocity squared multiplied by four gives you an idea of the gradient of pressure across the valve. And here the mean gradient is over 40 millimeters of mercury. That's a measure of severity of obstruction and anything over 40 millimeters of mercury is both severe and deadly in somebody who has symptoms. That's why she passed out because while standing there wasn't enough pressure to get blood to her brain. Because this is a structural problem with the heart, giving medicines cannot fix it. The only way to fix this obstruction is by replacing the type valve with a new one. In the past, the only option she would have had would have been to have open heart surgery by cutting open the rib cage, exposing the chest, exposing the aorta, cutting through the aorta, exposing the damaged aortic valve, taking it out and replacing it with a new one. However, many people who had this fatal problem were too high risk to go through such major surgery. And they had no options and they would often die. So about approximately 10 years ago, a new procedure was developed whereby the valve could be replaced without open heart surgery. It was initially used for those patients who were prohibitive risk for surgery, but over time, as it kept improving, it became safer to the point that it is now really the way of the future and an option for most patients with aortic stenosis. So naturally the first question is, how is it that we can replace an entire heart valve without opening up the chest? Well, as they say, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And for years now, we've already been doing procedures where we're delivering stents to the heart, which are small enough to go through the arteries in the arm or the leg. So the idea was that if we could compress down these artificial valves into a size that was small enough where we could fit them through an artery, we could pass them along that artery to the heart and then expand them fully at the location where they need to be deployed. And that is exactly how TAVR or transcatheter aortic valve replacement works. The standard route of inserting the valve is through 
an artery in the leg called the femoral artery, although other access points are also an option, such as the subclavian artery in the chest, the carotid artery, and others. So naturally, the first question is, will Jill's arteries allow the valve to pass through them to get to the heart? Well, the way we answer that question is by doing a CT scan to look at the size of the arteries and to check if there are any blockages in them that might prevent the valve from passing along through those arteries. Also, the CT scan looks at the anatomy of the disease valve and several other details which help us figure out what size of the valve we need to put in, and also which type of the different types of valves that are available should be used in her particular case. Based on all of this planning, we decided to treat her with a valve called an Evolute Pro Plus. It's made by Medtronic. Now, this video is not sponsored by Medtronic. This is purely for your educational purposes. Here you can see the CT scan imaging showing the route that will be taken, inserting the valve from the femoral artery up through the common iliac, going up the descending aorta, across the aortic arch, down the ascending aorta to get it to the location of the diseased valve. This is the Medtronic valve in its fully expanded state. The valve is compressed through a funnel-like tube into a smaller size and essentially pushed into a delivery system tube, which keeps it small and compressed so that it can be delivered into the body through a small access site in the femoral artery. Once it's inside the body and taken up to where it needs to be, the tube that is covering it and keeping it compressed will gradually be uncovered. And as that's done, the valve will gradually re-expand and be deployed at the desired location on the level of the native aortic valve or the native annulus. The problem with aortic stenosis is that the old valve had become hard and calcified like a rock, which is why it doesn't open anymore. This very nature of the problem of the valve becoming hardened is actually used as an anchoring system. As you can imagine, the opening has become pinched down and small. And if you get through that tight opening, place a compressed tube and a compressed valve and allow that valve to expand inside that tightened spot, as it opens up, its metallic cylinder pushes out against the old hardened valve and pushes it out of the way to create a new larger opening. As you know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction so that the hardened old valve pushes back onto the metallic cylinder of the new valve, holding it in place and anchoring it to that location. The metallic struts are strong enough to keep pushing outward and remain in a cylindrical tube-like shape. Within that cylindrical tube are sutured the leaflets of the new valve, which can open and close allowing the blood to flow throughout without an obstruction. But we make sure that the location where the valve is released is perfect and will remain anchored to the calcified old aortic valve apparatus. Here we see how the tired aortic valve was not opening when the heart was trying to push the blood out and how it was causing an obstruction to flow. You can see the turbulence which led to that murmur that we heard when Jill first came into the ER. That turbulence is all the color that you see in the picture. You can also see that the valve was leaking before based on how some of the flow of some of the color is going backwards into the heart. As you can see, the pressure inside the heart is extremely high at about 220 millimeters mercury and it's much higher than the pressure in the aorta. The gradient is the extra amount of pressure that the heart has to generate over and above the normal blood pressure so that the person can walk and stay alive. This elevated pressure and the stress in the heart in the left ventricle can lead to shortness of breath, heart failure, and death. You can imagine how stressed Jill's heart must have been because of this obstruction. And here you see after the valve has been deployed, how there is no more turbulence of flow and no more obstruction. Also, it's closing appropriately as there's no blood leaking backward as it was before. Here you can see the measurement of the pressure after the valve has been replaced where all the pressure generated in the heart is effectively transmitted into the body and into the aorta so Jill shouldn't feel lightheaded or faint again as she did before. Also, the pressure inside is not excessive as it was before because there is no gradient and no obstruction to overcome. This is a beautiful result of a new valve which is functioning perfectly just like it should in its natural state. You can imagine how much better people feel after this problem is resolved and based on massive amounts of data, this procedure saves lives more than most other things that we do in medicine. 
that is the magic of how critical thinking, medical innovation, and advancement in technology have helped improve and save countless lives. Jill went home the next day after her tabber. So that, my friends, is what aortic stenosis is and how a tabber is performed. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Make sure you leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And if you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. Stay safe, stay happy, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.